May is Bladder Cancer Awareness Month. Hi, welcome. I am Dr. Jennifer Lenahan. Thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to go over some facts about bladder cancer, some things for prevention of bladder cancer and for diagnosis. Bladder cancer is very, I guess, near and dear to my heart because it's something I spend a lot of time with, with patients. And I feel like this affects probably about 200,000 new patients a year, um, more so for men than for women. And we think one of those reasons is that men are actually more likely to be smokers than women are. And sometimes it can be high as three times the rate for men than for women. So let's start with the bladder cancer basics. So overall, when I talk to patients in my clinic, we talk about the different types of bladder cancer. So there's, there's bladder cancer that's very superficial, like in the lining of your bladder, on the very inside of your bladder. Then the bladder cancer can go through the lining into the muscle wall of the bladder and out. So how we really treat patients with bladder cancer is based on that diagnosis. Now, most patients, when they get diagnosed with bladder cancer, will have a couple of very telltale symptoms. The first of being is blood that they see in the urine. Sometimes it could even be microscopic blood that maybe your primary care doctor or your internist picked up on a urine test. And if there's a sufficient enough blood in the urine, that can be suspicious for bladder cancer. Now, the good news is, is that we actually have about five different urine tests that can help us figure out if there's a risk of bladder cancer. Sometimes patients will need a cystoscopy, which is a camera into the bladder to see if there's bladder cancer in there. And you also need a CT scan to look at the kidneys, the ureters down to the bladder. Because sometimes you can actually have a very specific type of bladder cancer called upper tract urothelial carcinoma that goes up to the kidneys and inside the ureters, but it's actually the same cells inside the bladder that cause bladder cancer. So you wanna make sure that if you see blood in the urine, or if one of your doctors tells you that you have microscopic blood in the urine, that you get checked out with a CAT scan, a camera into the bladder, and possibly one of the five urine tests that I talked about that can look for bladder cancer in the urine. Now, once we diagnose the bladder cancer, we will do a procedure like a biopsy where we go into the bladder with a small camera in through the urethra, which is the P channel. We go in there and we remove the tumor. And we can tell from the tumor and the pathology if it's high grade or low grade, that's how aggressive the cells look under the microscope and how deep the cells are going into the bladder because those two are very different treatment options. If the bladder cancer is not going into the muscle layer of the bladder, you usually can just treat it by removing it during the camera into the bladder surgery. And then sometimes we may even have to put some chemotherapies into the bladder using a catheter to help treat the tumors on the inside. The good news about that is most patients tolerate that type of chemotherapy very well. They usually come in once a week for six weeks and they get this installation of chemotherapy into their bladder. It's sort of based around the bladder, treats the cancer, then they drain it out and they don't end up with any nausea or some of the other side effects like severe fatigue that chemotherapy can sometimes cause. In the same line of therapy of putting things into the bladder or washes into the bladder, there's also something called BCG. And this is an immunotherapy for bladder cancer. It basically enhances your own immune signaling to kill the cancer in your bladder. And this works very well. In fact, with BCG, up to 86% of bladder cancers can be treated slash cured. And because, you know, we worry about the recurrence rate of these bladder tumors. In general, if you have a low grade bladder cancer that's not invading through the wall of your bladder, about 40% of those can recur over the next several years. So we have to watch you very closely. If it's a high grade tumor, the chance of recurrence is even higher. So that's why we use these particular bladder washes, whether it be a chemotherapy or an immunotherapy like BCG, to help really prevent the recurrence of the cancer, slow it down, and sometimes even cure it. 
and BCG is a well-known immunotherapy. It was one of the first immunotherapies that was ever used. And again, this is a wash we put into the bladder. Now, if you have what we call muscle invasive bladder cancer, this is a little bit harder of a decision tree. And I, one of the things I've found over the years is that I have a lot of patients that come see me because they want to pursue bladder sparing protocols, meaning being able to keep their bladder. For muscle invasive bladder cancer, where the cancer is going through the layers of the bladder, the recommended treatment is usually chemotherapy followed by bladder removal called a cystectomy. And then we have to make you a new bladder. Well, oftentimes patients are older or they may want, not want to pursue that. And so we spend a lot of time trying to find them either clinical trials or other way to preserve their bladder, to preserve their bladder function. And you can also do this with chemo and radiation. And there are very specific patients that qualify for these bladder sparing, uh, but there's a lot more different trials that are coming out and different therapies that we're really trying to push and conserve, conserve the bladder in the right situation. What you have to be careful with bladder cancer, especially if it's high grade or it's gone into the muscle, a lot of these patients can already have what we call micrometastatic disease, meaning that microscopic cells might have already left the bladder and gone into the local lymph nodes. And that happens about 30% of the time by the time you're already in, in, you know, diagnosed with bladder cancer into the muscle. So now I've told you a lot about bladder cancer, but what can you do to prevent it? First, stop smoking. This is the highest risk for bladder cancer. If patients keep smoking, even after they're diagnosed with bladder cancer, it potentiates more and more tumors. So that's one thing you can do. We also recommend getting your analysis screening by your primary care doctor if you're at risk. Now I do have a lot of patients that will come in to me and say, well, my mom had bladder cancer or my grandpa had bladder cancer, am I at risk too? There is no direct genetic connection that we know of at this point. We know that there are some genes with bladder cancer that may dispose patients to having more aggressive forms of bladder cancer, but they're not necessarily genetically transferred from generation to generation. So make sure you're, you're following up on your physicals with your primary care doctor. Please don't smoke. Try to avoid radiation if you can. Um, there's also some aniline dyes um, that people might work with or work in factories with that can also predispose them to having bladder cancer. Uh, chemicals like benzene have also been associated with bladder cancer. And there's even a Chinese herb called aristocolic acid. And we are such a society today based on different supplements and more natural treatments that we can use. I would avoid this one. It has been known to cause bladder cancer. So there's some herbal supplements called Fang Chi that patients may take, may using them for inflammation or a variety of other ailments, but this is a, aristocolic acid is a known compound that can cause urothelial carcinoma, which is also bladder cancer. And that bladder cancer, those same cells that can cause the cancer in your bladder, also can cause cancer up in the kidneys and the ureters called upper tract urothelial carcinoma. So I would avoid this chemical and avoid this supplement if you can. Again, this is Dr. Lenahan giving you a little tidbit uh, at Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, which is May 2023.